But one of the things that we're facing today that's very relevant is this push to make hate speech illegal. And they start off using a very vague term, just, you know, hate speech. So you think, think of the word hate, right? And this is, this is so indicative of what, I mean, it's, it's actually very clever when you think about it, because it's very subtle. But they'll take a word, like, I mean, just, if, if, if you're just kind of clear your thoughts, when you just think of the word hate. Hate's not, it's not going to give you a good feeling, right? It's not going to evoke a good response. It's going to be a negative response. It's going to be something that you're going to respond to just naturally, intrinsically, as maybe being kind of opposed to. You think of, oh, hate, yeah, I don't like that. It's not a good feeling, right? We, lo we like love. It's something that is positive. It's good. Hate, bad, love, good, right? These are things that, that at a very base level, when you just hear it without any context, without knowing anything else, you're just going to hear that and be like, oh, okay, yeah. So when people start saying, well, we want to cut down on hate. Well, overall, sure, yeah, we want to cut down on hate. But what's the context? See, they're going to be very vague about it. And they get people to just accept, oh, well, yeah, hate is bad. Hate is bad. Hate is bad. Well, hate's not always bad. There's, always a, there's definitely a time that we need to hate. I'm going to get into that a little later. But, but there's, there's definitely a time where we need to be able to hate things. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there's a time for war, a time for peace, a time to love, and a time to hate. There is a time for it. There is an appropriate place to have that. But when, when you just start hearing these real vague terms over and over and over again, that's how the brainwashing works. But the fact that we have these people that even would make hate speech a law, because think about what's hate speech. It's, it's what you say. Speech. Just the words that come out of your mouth are just going to become illegal because someone is offended at what you've said or because it's deemed by somebody to be hateful, to be not loving. Look at Isaiah chapter 29, verse number 18. Because the Bible describes the type of person that would even create a hate speech law, believe it or not. It's found in Isaiah 29, verse number 18. The Bible says, And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. So we're going to see a contrast here. Obviously, these are verses 18, 19, very good things. Talking about the deaf hearing, the blind receiving their sight, right? The meek increasing their joy. The poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. But look at verse number 20. For the terrible one is brought to naught. So the reason why these people are rejoicing is because the terrible one is brought to nothing and the scorner is consumed and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. The people that are watching just trying to accuse someone and, and, and bring iniquity on them. It says that make, so this is continuing on with that same type of person, the terrible one, the scorner. Verse 21, that make a man an offender for a word. It makes someone guilty or an offender just for saying something, just at a word. That's what that means. That make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. Now it says thereafter, make a man an offender for a word, lay a snare or a trap for him that reproveth in the gate. Throughout the Bible, you'll see that when, when men are known in the gates, they sit in the gates for their wisdom. People come to them for knowledge um, because they know God's law. And they'll reprove or tell people they're wrong because they're esteemed and they know God's law. They're, and they're going to be telling people they're wrong in the gate. So it says here that the wicked person is going to lay a trap for him that reproveth in the gate because they hate God's word. They're going to make a man an offender for a word. That's the, the terrible one. That's the scorner. That's those that look for iniquity. That's wicked people are going to try to create these types of laws. Now, God's law has nothing in it associated with, with saying hateful things or committing a crime and then adding to, well, the crime's going to be even a, a stronger punishment if we find out that hate was involved. This is one of the stupidest things. This actually is on the books today. Even though there is no, it's called a hate crime. So currently, we don't have a law against hate speech. That if you say something that someone deems to be hateful, that's not against the law yet. But what is against the law 
is what they've done is they've taken regular crimes, right? Of course, it's a crime to kill someone, to, you know, to, to injure someone, you know, when you fight someone, you have assault, you've got battery, you could, you could hurt someone, you physically injure them. These are all crimes that you could commit against someone else, evil you could bring upon someone else. But now what they've done is they've just said, well, if hate is involved, then it's worse. And this is the stupidest thing in the world. This is what I'm talking about, being able to think critically. Because there's just an agenda behind this. It's about um, normalization and acceptance and tolerance of certain perverts than it actually has to do with something that makes sense. Because if someone's going to get in a fight or murder somebody or try to harm somebody, they're not doing it because they love them, <laughs> right? Hate is going to be intrinsic to all of these crimes where you're hurting somebody. So just saying, well, this specific crime, well, that's a hate crime. Even vandalism. Even vandalism. You don't, you don't vandalize someone's property because you love them. I mean, it's just, it's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. But what they want to do is they'll, they'll take all these things and say, well, this is a hate crime. So that's going to be even, you know, punishable by even more. Well, if you determine a certain act to be worthy of a certain punishment, why does it matter what their intent is, really? Like if it's, if you're harming someone or vandalizing someone, the crime's a crime. You, you, it is what it is. You can't, you can't add more to it. And God's word never has anything like that found within the pages of the Bible. 